Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, how big can offshore wind energy become? We have a special report from a wind farm in the North Sea. There's potential, there's wind, there are resources, there is space. The technology exists and it's growing. First, a quick look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. If you're here in Europe and you thought it was colder than average last month, then you would be right. Across the region, temperatures were 0.9 degrees Celsius below the new 1991 to 2020 average. Then, if we have a look at this map, you can see that across Central and Western Europe, temperatures were more than two degrees below average for April. Slovenia hit a new record low for the month. And in the UK, they experienced their lowest average minimum temperature since April 19. 22. Then in France, vines and fruit trees were devastated by hard frosts. And one of the reasons they suffered so much damage is because it's now generally warmer earlier in the year, as climate scientist Robert Votar explains. You have to be very careful with these late frosts because global warming now means that the growing period is longer and the spring season starts earlier. Therefore, plants can be exposed to freezing temperatures which are quite normal for the month of April, but that exposure can happen during a stage of the plant's development that is a lot more advanced. Now to our report on offshore wind energy and we had a truly rare opportunity to sail right up close to some of these towering turbines off the coast of Belgium. We wanted to see how the sector is expanding and how you harness the most from the power of the wind. We're joining a team from Belgian company Parkwind for a routine visit to their North Sea wind farm. It's 50 kilometres offshore from Ostend, so why put the turbines so far out? The further we are offshore, the steadier and the more uh, energetic the wind is. Other factors is that uh, the people don't want it in their backyard, so they've been putting it further away. Once there, the team sets to work, maintaining one of the 399 turbines supplying 10% of Belgium's electricity demand every day. The sector is expanding fast in every sense of the word. This turbine towers 188 metres above the sea, while the biggest are 220 metres tall. The trend is to go bigger turbines. Why? Because for every turbine you need a foundation, you need to install it, you need the vessels, you need all the crew and the mobilisation. If you can do uh, 15 megawatt in one go, rather than five of these three megawatt turbines, you can gain time, you can gain money. But in the end, we also need to build more in total in bigger, bigger surface. This wind farm is now effectively full, but new permits are being granted from Western Ireland to the Baltics. Our weather and climate is a consideration for developers as average wind speeds in Europe can vary by 6% per year. Climate expert Gildit Kano advises companies on long-term wind data. It's very important to bear in mind that even a little change in wind conditions, only a few tenths of a metre per second, can affect the viability of a project. They can change the type of machine you're going to use and they can also change the position of the machines. Another factor in the viability of a project is the depth of the sea. These turbines stand on pillars in 30 metres of water, but many of the best spots for wind are in deep water where pillars aren't viable. Luckily, a solution has been found. Technology has provided the answer. Now we're able to install floating turbines. This is giving us the opportunity to be able to develop offshore wind projects in many regions that have a lot of wind. But there is the possibility of connecting to the grid, but where the sea is too deep. With the help of those floating turbines, offshore wind is projected to rise from meeting 3% of European electricity demand today to 25% by 2050. You can read more about it on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.